Hey Lodi residents and friends of social media, Lieutenant Mobilio here from the Lodi Police Department. And I have a special interview coming to you in a minute with Lodi's own Jimmy Scalia. And he's going to come here and talk about the borough of Lodi and his passion of Bobby Darren and what he does through the lecture circuit talking about Bobby Darren. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Experience the hits, experience the story, and experience the magic of the one and only Bobby Darren. Splish splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. As a walk, yeah, yeah, yeah. A girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. The call, yeah, yeah, yeah. My own, I wanna be. Oh. So I don't have to dream alone. If I were a car. Would you marry me anyway? Would you have my baby? Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. Though his life was short, Bobby packed it with as much success and tenacity as possible. In public, he was honored, glorified, and envied. But in private, he was constantly battling health and family issues. These complexities have made the musician and the man almost impossible to dissect. And most portrayals of him seem to lack the Darren punch. Until now. Beyond the sea, the life and music of Bobby Darren is a lecture that entertains and enlightens by incorporating audio and never before seen video into the presentation. Bobby Darren archivist, Jimmy Scalia, will be your host as you follow the story of one of the greatest performers of all time. Working in conjunction with Dodd Darren and the Darren estate, Jimmy has studied and documented this story for over 20 years and Make sure to stay till the end, where a Q&A session will be held, as well as the opportunity to see original Darren memorabilia. It's a lecture, unlike all others, about a man who was unlike all others. But it is something that everyone can enjoy. Beyond the Sea, the life and music of Bobby Darren. Back in time. Hey everyone, let's welcome Jimmy Scalia to the Lodi Show. Hey Jim, how are you? Welcome here today. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jimmy is a uh, lifelong resident here of Lodi and uh, a Bobby Darren aficionado. So we're going to get into Jimmy in a minute and then he's going to talk a little bit about uh, Bobby Darren and all the things that he does with regards to his lecture circuit uh, on Bobby Darren. So Jim, you are a, uh, a, a lifelong Lodi resident, is that correct? Absolutely, so yes. What are some of your memories that you have of, uh, of Lodi growing up? I'll tell you, a lot of great memories. Uh, it was a great town to grow up in, and it's still a great town to live in. Um, just the people were wonderful. I had great friends, and they're just, you know, you can't beat it. You yeah, beat I, it. I agree. I agree. Um, you still live here in Lodi? Still live here in Lodi. And uh, being a lifelong resident, where, where did you go to school? Well, I went to school, actually, I grew up in, uh, on Howard Street. Howard Street. So, I went to Washington School for two years, 
kindergarten and first grade, and then they rezoned, and I went to Columbus School the remainder. Because I'm a Washington School guy. Yeah, yeah, that I know. Yes, so, I, yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you're from the uh, part of town on Howard Street, which you considered here in law, in, as the police, would be Section 2. That's right off of uh, Outwater Lane, for those of you who don't, who don't know. Um, our connection, actually, is our parents. Your parents know my parents, my parents know your parents, and, and just the same as that, I know you, you know my son, I know your children, and that's that's our big Lodi connection. And, that's Lodi. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that is Lodi. That's, that's, Lodi. that's part of growing up in Lodi. Um, also part of being a big part of Lodi, uh, for many years, what was your tie to the borough of Lodi? My tie was I worked for the Board of Education in, in Lodi uh, as a custodian at Wilson School for and 25 years. 25 years, 25 years, at, years. At, in Wilson School. Yeah. And on your website, which we're going to mention at the end where you can find uh, Jimmy Scalia's website, uh, there's a video on there about an honest portrait of, of you. And that was filmed by who? My son, Anthony Scalia. And, and basically, what was that video about for you at that time? Well, you know, it, it came at a great time because 25 years of just living in the now at Wilson School, getting to watch all those children grow up and playing music for them and teaching them stuff, you know. When I was going to retire, there was no documentation. Now I'm an archivist, mm -hmm. so I document stuff. And I was thinking it's ironic. My son was in his last year of college, he had a project, he says, Dad, I think I'm going to do a documentary on you, I want to do it in black and white, and that's how that came about, and um, I just show what I did for 25 years. And this was some, uh, filmed by your son, Anthony? This was filmed by my son, Anthony, yes. And uh, what, what's, he up to, what's he up to now, Anthony? Well, he's still freelancing, he does video work for Goldman Sachs, uh, he's hopping and bopping all over the place, so he does definitely keeps himself busy. And he did very well. He won a couple of awards with that document. Yeah, that was really yeah. so he did good. Yeah, I enjoyed, he's a good kid. I enjoyed watching it. And actually, like I said to you before, before you came here to, to join us on the show today, I went back and, and, and I and I watched it again. And it, it is a it's a really it's a it's a cool video. So when you get a chance, go on uh, Jimmy's website and you get a chance to watch him uh, the Jimmy Sky and Honest Portrait. It's really a, a cool video. And and I said to you before uh, we, we got started that as a young patrolman, I, I can remember many times in the middle of the night if the, uh, the uh, alarm system would go off at, at Wilson School, you and I would meet up and, and we'd talk, we'd have to naturally we'd walk to school, make sure everything was secure, and, and, and then we would wind up getting into talking about, about music and, uh, and all his different influences and, and his connection with, with Bobby Darren, which, which by myself, you know, I'm a big Bobby Darren fan myself, so when you talk about Bobby Darren, I'm intrigued by what you say too, because I, I am also a, uh, a Bobby Darren fan, which we're, which we're going to get into uh, into a minute right now. So, let's talk about one of your biggest passions. Besides your family, one of your biggest passions is is Bobby Darren, right? And, right. and your Bobby Darren lectures, correct? Correct. All right. For those of you watching and have no idea who or what Bobby Darren was, what can you tell us about Bobby Darren? He was a chameleon. He was a guy who could act, was up for an Academy Award Best Supporting Actor. He could write music. He's in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, he just was an all-around guy who knew how to make different types of music. That's why I liked him. Um, I always had a lot of respect for Frank Sinatra and swing music and, you know, Dean Martin. I mean, I love Dean Martin. Who doesn't? Um, Rolling Stones and the Beatles and, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and the Eagles. Love it all. But there is this fiber that Bobby Darren can actually, you know, get his way through. Mm. And I think that's why I gravitated towards Bobby Darren and just became a huge fan. How how did you get into the Bobby Darren? I mean, what was the how would how did you find Bobby Darren to? I'll tell you how my I got into Bobby Darren. Okay. My, my uncle, my uncle Phil, who who you know, yes, was a naturally he was a big Elvis fan. But besides being an Elvis fan, he was a Bobby Darren fan. And I, I never really knew naturally Elvis. Everybody knows Elvis right. and Sinatra and Dean Martin. But who, as a young kid, who's Bobby Darren? I really never knew who Bobby Darren was. But I I took it upon myself to go 
buy some albums of Bobby Darren and learn who Bobby Darren was. And that's how I became, sure. was actually through my Uncle Phil's how I became a, a, a Bobby Darren fan. So right. how did you find out yeah. and become him? What happened was my dad, another Lodi resident, lifelong resident, along with my grandmother, who was a lifelong resident, um, went to the School of Performing Arts and then joined who, the Marines. Who went to, who went to the My dad. Oh, really? So, drops out, joins the Marines, just like his brother, Manny Scalia, they all joined the Marines. And um, so what happens is, he knew a lot about music. And yeah. this, my dad. And his tastes were very eclectic, as my mom. So my dad, of course, and I to all that kind of big band or even classical music or whatever, and my mom with the Elvis and the rock and roll, I, we just had all this music playing in our house. And he had a Bobby Darin album. Mm. And I just, it appealed to me like crazy. And he gifted it to me when I was uh, 1967, when I was seven years old. One side had rock and roll on it. And you flipped it over and you had swing music like artificial flowers with these mm -hmm. great arrangements. And I'm like, he was an Italian kid with a, a little bite to him in a shark skin suit. And uh, I'm like, up my ears around. And that was, that's why he became the guy for me. If you had to say, we're going to get into it in a minute about his hits, but out of all his songs that he ever made, what was, what was one of your favorite songs? One of my favorite songs is, uh, it's not really the one you think, I don't know why, but You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. I love his rendition he does on the uh, Ed Sullivan Show at the Flamingo. Um, but, you know, there's just so many. The only thing I can tell you, in over years of doing line taps and transferring things over digital for the Darren Estate, mm -hmm. I must have heard Mac the Knife, well, my family must have also heard Mac the Knife. 10 million times along with so it. And I will tell you, when I start to hear that song, it's like, I know, you know, but by the second verse, it kicked me up a notch. Yeah. So I would say probably the, the go to's like Mac the Knight and Beyond the Sea. And like I told you before, when you pulled out this guitar, not knowing where the guitar was from, and we'll talk about the guitar in a second, that if I was a carpenter, it was probably one of my favorite Bobby Darren songs. And then you just told me that. He played that song on that guitar, is that correct? On that, yes, he would use this, uh, yeah, because it had that harpsichord uh, sound to it, which, if I were a carpenter, was kind of up for a Grammy, too. Was it? That's what, yeah, yeah. So where, where, was, where was Bobby Darren from, and uh, how did he get started in, in the music business? Well, you know, Bobby Darren was from uh, the Bronx. He was a Bronx kid, and um, his parents, his mom was in Boardville. He had taken ill, so he was kind of homeschooled at a very young age for a, a number of years. And uh, while being homeschooled, she taught him piano, music, timing, comic timing. It all connects. And he was learning all these different types of music and stuff like that. And I think that's what made him want to be an entertainer. Mm. And so before you know it, he starts writing songs, he starts teaming up with Don Kirshner, and they're writing some songs, and they're panhandling, like trying to sell their stuff. And Connie Francis and Bruce Brown, you know, like some R&B people were, were singing their songs. And then one thing led to another, where eventually, his own songs that he wrote, he got recording contracts, and he became... He started to kick off. Yeah. Um, some of his musical influences himself, who, who influenced... Bobby Darren, how did, besides his, I guess you just said now, his mom was a big influence on him, but were there any musical influences that he took after or he, he looked up to as a, as a young guy getting into the business? Yeah, he definitely, despite there was always that riff with, between him and Sinatra, he really yeah. loved and respected Frank Sinatra. Frank was the voice. Um, Al Jolson, uh, but Al Jolson was also a showman. Yes. That's where that, that Darren thing comes in, not just a singer. Uh, Bing Crosby. These were the types of music. But he would also listen to, which they would call a hillbilly music or whatever back in the day, which was kind of like the country western um, from Louisiana Hayride and stuff. So that was kind of his, his love, along being around Harlem. So he was into that R&B, that black mm -hmm. too. Um, you know, so Jack, you know, that's... How, where his influences came Yeah, pretty much so, yeah. 
And so as he as he progressed through time and he got involved in movies and acting and everything else, um, he took on with Connie Francis at a, at a young age, right? He was, yes. was he was writing for her. Was that, is that what? I yeah, mean? she did some of his music, and they had the same uh, uh, manager uh, and uh, George Check. So uh, that's how they got to know each other. And a little romance bloomed between two Italian kids, you know? But her father, if I remember, her father was not... Uh... Listen, Mr. Francanaro, you don't mess around with his Conchita. And mm -hmm. that's all the way. He was a very overpowering Italian dad and did not care for Bobby Darren. But he wound up marrying who? Sandra Day. Right. Yeah. And how long were they married for? They were married for, let's see, 19, about 1960, 1967. So you figure about seven years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did they have any children? Yes, they did. They had a son uh, by the name of Dodd, Dodd Darren. And in your connection with, with Dodd? Uh, yeah, well, to, you know, after, I've been around so long, I kind of just became part of that family, the inner circle, that a lot of the key players that got me to where I am, unfortunately now have passed away. And so it's basically Don and myself sometimes who lean into me for archive stuff. Mm -hmm. So he and he is like a brother. He's got he has no other siblings. So you know, beautiful guy. Good. And uh, let let's get into a little bit about his music. So what were some of his biggest songs and and some of the songs that just you know that captivated a lot of people at the time? I mean, don't forget uh, for, for most people who don't know, Bobby Darren passed away in and we we're going to get to that in a minute. But he passed away in 1973, and and Jim, along with his with uh, Todd Dodd Darren, are are keeping his his music alive. And and as you can see here, we have some of the music here that um, Jimmy's been involved with. Um, we have some DVD discs and and a brand new uh, record collection. Believe it or not, albums are coming back out, and they're more popular now than ever before. So they just put out a brand new uh, record collection, which you could say, find this on Amazon. You can go on Amazon, yes. And you can find that on Amazon. And and I know, I know Jimmy was uh, big in the production of a lot of different CDs and greatest hits and and the um, the milk songs. Is that the, the milk shows? Milk shows, yes. milk shows. I know yes. you were big with that also. Yeah. So Jimmy had a lot to do with his music. So so what were some of his his biggest songs and and songs that really got the people going? Well, I guess they would be the, the go-to songs. Like, he had the ability, like, Splish Splash, or he, uh, which he wrote, it was a hit. It's like an American bandstand, you yeah. know. Uh, Queen of the Hop, you know, uh, Dream Lover. Those were all the songs that the teenagers were dancing to. Um, and they're really good because he knows how to put a song over. He's got that little electricity in his mm -hmm. voice. Uh, and then when he just flips it on a tear and goes to, like, Beyond the Sea and Mac the Knife, totally different genre of music. Right. But yet, he can nail that, too. He gets it, and um, artificial flowers, and then when he goes in the mid-60s, a lot of those 50s artists just started falling, you know, below the waist, and that was it. So he was starting to reinvent himself, and he was doing If I Were a Carpenter, and he was writing all different types of music for, uh, you know, FM type music because around 67, 68, FM radio was starting to come in. Music was changing. Sure. But he was right on the cusp with that. Right. So. And, and uh, Dream Lover, be another big. Dream Lover, Lover was big. It was a very influential. It was probably one of the most important records for Bobby Darren. Dream Lover. Yeah. Over it, Mac the Night. Yeah. Really. It was a strategic plan because it was a transition record because uh, he had health issues, so he didn't know his longevity. Mm -hmm. So the thing was, if he figured. Once he got a hit with Splish Splash and Queen of the Hop and all, he was going to make a record that the children, the children would love, the teenagers, and also their parents. Mm. And if he could break through that, we'll have both. Right. And it worked. Very good. And in, in 2004, Hollywood put out a movie called Beyond the Sea. Mm -hmm. I, I know they contacted you on that, so what, what was your input uh, into the movie at that time? Well, what I did is, being on the archivist, I have all this stuff in hard drives and uh, documented. So whenever Kevin Spacey wanted some audio of Bobby Darren or photos or maybe some video of uh, shows or you know stuff that's not available, I would render it to him. So I, he would get to know the character even more and get the feel of his speech and how you know. And I would I did stuff like that. So Bobby Darren, he, he passed away, a young man. I believe he was um, 37. 37. And um, what did he what did he pass? What, you had already said when he was a young when he was a young boy, he had already had health issues. He had health issues from a young man. So it, 
you know, he had like a time frame that he probably wasn't going to live a normal lifespan. So when, what did he actually die of? Did you? Uh, it was heart ailment. Heart it was ailment. a heart ailment, yeah. So, and that's probably why he hit the ground running. He was always this cocky kind of guy or whatever. But he didn't have time to wait around. I don't know how much the public realized that, but he had to be somewhere yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like he had that mentality. So he, he, I know he had a couple of heart operations also. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He had, uh, he had one in like 1970, which brought him some time. Uh, I believe it could have been uh, uh, later in 1970. And it did buy him some time. They replaced some stuff. Um, but back then, it was still a new horizon to tackle for these doctors, you right. know. So. And uh, again, 1973, I believe. 1973, yeah. So, yeah. He's yeah. been gone. He's been gone for a long time. He's been gone longer than he was alive. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and I spoke to you earlier before we started, and I said that out of all the uh, the contemporary artists today that are out there that are, you know, popular today, it's it's Michael Bublé who actually always when he's interviewed, and, I, and I've seen him, you know, many times when he gets interviewed, he always brings up Bobby Darren. As, naturally, he brings up Sinatra and D. Martin that are influenced, but he always brings up uh, Bobby Darren as one of his biggest influences. Do you, do you, do you have you ever, you ever got a chance to meet Bobby Darren or anything like that? Uh, Bobby Darren. Uh, Michael, Michael Buble. Buble or anything like that? No, I did not, but I will tell you this. When Michael Buble was just breaking, he was coming out of Canada. Yes. I think David Foster or Paul Anko, whatever, yes. so those guys were involved with that. Um, he was playing at the Red Blazer, and he was just starting. He had his first disc out, and um, my friend Harriet Wasser, who was Bobby's PR person, she was older at this stage of the game, but she says, we have to see this guy, and we were comped. So we did get to see Michael Bublé, and he did do a Mac the Knife. I did not talk to him because then he ran out, and you know, but he was just up and coming. He's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you knew the guy loved the music, yeah. and he had the chops, and he's the fellow who's carrying the torch for this type of music, because yeah. it's great. Absolutely. He's, he's very famous. I mean, yeah, he goes exactly. all over. He's Thank all God. Over God bless him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jim. So before we go, just besides Bobby Darren and, and, and uh, Elvis and Dee Martin and Sinatra, who are some of your musical influences that you still like to listen to today besides those, those guys there? Well, um, definitely Elvis. I mean, I always liked Elvis. How could you not like yeah. Elvis? He was just really a trendsetter. Um, and of course, Dean Martin's a given. I mean, I just, you know, it's great. He's great. Uh, the other people that I really like, I, I gotta tell you, I've been really a lucky guy. Going to Wilson School, cleaning that school, and yet still getting to meet people on the weekend and sometimes work with them. One was Dion. The, the yeah, Italian guy from the Bronx, and um, I just love that R&B sound, that Bronx blues that he carried, mm. you know? And, you know, him I listen to a lot, and even one of my favorite albums is called Yo Frankie. When he got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, Dave Edmonds, Patti Smith, uh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank now, but like Paul Simon, all these guys were on board with that album, Lou Reed. Mm. It's a great album. So I would have to say Dion and like Tony Orlando. I, Tony Orlando, I love. Mm. You know, he's pretty. But now you're not like a Zeppelin guy. Or? Zeppelin guy, I like. I have all the Zeppelins. I got them in my iPod. I got them on my phone. Um, yeah, no, I definitely like Led Zeppelin. I always do. I listen to Led Zeppelin. I, I'm very sporadic. If I hear something like the Grassroots, one day I'll be listening to Grassroots. The next, week, uh, next day I'll be listening to Bing Crosby, but then I'll turn around and it could be like Eagles or like mm. Steve Miller or Kiss or, you know. Well, Kiss, now you hit, you hit, the, you hit the court on that one. Well, Kiss, I know him I, a long time. I know he's a kid. I remember when you were at the auto parts place, we would talk, you would go to uh, yeah, all, record all the stuff in Kiss, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, how about today? You listen to anybody today at all? Is there any contemporary artist today that you, that you enjoy listening to today? You know, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, you know, I still like Sheryl Crow. I do like the girl who's got that play, Sarah Bareilles. Um, you know, I like people like that. I still listen to that kind of stuff. But I'll still rock out with, like, the Queen and, you know, whatever. All right. All right, Jim. Well, thank you very much for coming thank out. Thank you very and much. Talking about thank Lodi you. and thank Bobby so Darren. Much. Love Lodi. So, if you found this interview with Jimmy Scalia interesting, and you want to know more about Bobby Darren, go on his website, 
He's also touring right now. He has a, uh, a, a lecture tour that he goes out to called Beyond the Sea, The Life and Times of Bobby Darren. Uh, we're going to post these on our website also after this video. So you get to see, all, he has all the tour dates that he goes around, and he, he talks to Bobby Darren. So again, Jim, thank you very much. Not a problem. May I say one thing? Sure. Though? My last name. Yes. In Lodi, I'm Skaya. I've always been Skaya. My father Skaya. My grandmother Skaya. When I met my wife, her parents came from Italy. This is some, oh my gosh, 35, 36 years ago. She said, Scalia, it's Scalia. I said, no, what are you talking about, Dana? It's, it's Scalia, we're all Scalia. She says, it's pr really pronounced Scalia. The I is pronounced as an E. I go, well, I've been Scalia, where I'm staying Scalia. But once I started getting involved in all this, little by little, even Julius LaRosa, they kept like pressuring me, saying, no, you're wrong. It's Scalia. I know. So I did I notice said, that, too, on the video. Yeah, I noticed like, that they were calling you Scalia. <laughs> spelled the same way. And I live in Lodi. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm always Scalia. Call me Scalia or Scalia. Just don't call me late for dinner. I'm the same guy. <laughs> All right, Jim. Again, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. All right. Have a great day. Stay safe. And thank you. Has such teeth there. And it shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has old Maggie Heap, babe And it keeps it uh, out of sight You know when that shark bite With his teeth, babe Scarlet billows start to spread Fancy gloves, though, where's old Maggie Heap, babe so there's never, never a trace of red Now on the sidewalk, uh -huh. ooh, Sunday morning uh -huh. Lies a body just oozing life Can someone sneak in round the corner Could that someone